Good morning, everyone. First off, just woke up. So hi, good morning. But before I get my day started, I was just washing the dishes and thinking about something that I've always wanted to talk about on this channel, but I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. And I like to wait till I feel like inspired. And then when I feel inspired, I'm like, yeah, it's go time. If you can hear my cat running around, she's playing. So you'll have to forgive her and her loudness. Shanti, come here, hold on. Let me go. Let me go. We'll ask her to be more patient. Shanti, oh, she's under the couch. Well, she's gonna play, guys. You gotta let, I'm gonna let the girl do what she's gonna do. She has to be free. So, um, okay, topic. Let's talk about anger. Okay, so I was washing the dishes and I was thinking because anger is something that can both be productive in your journey as a human and also counter productive when i say your journey as a human more so probably the appropriate language would be journey as a soul like your soul journey both as a human and as a spiritual being like that sort of merge but um yeah so i don't know i was thinking about it and i was thinking because i've been dealing with or i've been observing around me lots of anger obviously in our world it seems like everyone's angry and you know rightfully so Okay, I need to get my cats. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, my baby. Can you not do that, honey? Can I see? Can I see it? Thank you. Okay. Had to get what they were playing with. Hopefully, hopefully that'll take care of it. But, um, so yeah, there's a lot of anger in our world. And this anger, let's discuss. Why is it here? So our world is fucked up right now. And I will completely admit to that. And it's kind of backwards, like ass backwards for a variety of reasons. Um, but a lot of us have anger and resentment towards the world. And so we carry this around with us in our day to day. And so we resent the world, right? Because the outer is a reflection of the inner. Um, so we see what's going on in the news and we, we resent it. And again, our world is ass backwards right now. So I'm not suggesting that... Um, you shouldn't be angry that you don't have the right to be angry. But usually what's going on in the world will see amplified in some sort of aspect of our life. It's like a dramatized, um, think ultimate theater drama version of something that's going on in your personal life or your inner self. And so you see it and you get angry, you get triggered. You're like, oh, I hate this. Same thing, um, in your everyday life, like I said, you might, maybe it's not the news, maybe you don't watch news, which good, probably good for you. Um, but yeah, we see a lot of people, I see a lot of girls um, very, very angry at men. But I also see a lot of just angry men, period. Maybe angry at women, angry at the world. Um, and that has to do with them not being quite healed. We'll get to women angry at men. Um, it's the same thing, but I'm going to use the men example first and then we'll get to the women's, women's example. So men have this sort of rage at anger. And the thing is, is men are a lot more allowed to express it. Um, so when men express their anger, it's, it can be physical, it can be verbal, but it's often, it's like very explosive. And um, the thing is, they don't really get a lot of flack for it. Like they can act out more readily and really get away with a lot of the the sort of bad behavior that comes with anger. And anger is not a bad thing. But um, I don't think a lot of the sort of anger from men these days is the healthiest, nor is completely justified. What it is, is with, when you get to the root cause, I understand it. And really what you have to understand with the anger is those men who are angry, is they're really hurt. Something happened to them over the course of their life that made them so angry at the world. Maybe um, they were abused uh, mentally, physically, sexually, you never know. Something happened to them and it shattered their world. And rather than deal with it because it was too painful to deal with, they mask it with anger. I've done the same thing before too. Girls do this too, anyone. But I noticed a lot with men well, I guess not with men, because it's the same thing with girls when you get to the root problem. But um, in men, a lot of their anger comes from something that happened to them that they really haven't processed or dealt with. And so they're angry. They take it out on the world. But again, it's more acceptable for them too. And so really, I think men 
<laughs> really need to look at a lot of their anger. I wish as a society we um, talked to men more about their feelings um, we asked them about their feelings and that they felt comfortable and safe enough to express them because ultimately they're hurt. That's the reason why they're acting out and being assholes. They're hurt. Um, same thing with girls. Girls. Um, a lot of girls have anger towards the world, anger towards friends, jealousy, um, anger towards men. That's when I see the most. Anger towards men. And, hey, I've been guilty of that. Um, I used to hate men. I used to like hate men and like think that they were only shit and that um you know they weren't shit and that primarily comes from the fact that i hadn't healed my relationship with my dad bitch everything's all connected if you don't think it is i'm sorry it really is um and i had a really strenuous relationship with my dad just because um my childhood was quite challenging and we had a quite strained relationship but then i one day realized i was like you know what being angry at him not only is it only hurting me B, it's stopping my bag. So I used to, I had this idea of men uh, being a, like sort of abandoning and being sort of not present or being critical or being hurtful. And that's something I'm still working on, uh, sort of regrowing that belief of men in, in me, but I'm doing a lot better. And I found that the men in my life show up for me more, the less angry I am. And the more I, first of all, focus on their positive aspects and the more I give them the chance to show up for me. Are you, am I, are you, a lot of us, we have to ask ourselves, are we even giving the men in our lives the chance to show up for us? Or are we just automatically angry? Because if we're angry at them, again, I, I know there's a lot of bad behavior in this world from men. But if you're only focusing on that, you're not seeing the plenty of good men who actually are around. Stop saying men ain't shit. They are shit. You're shit too. Women are shit. Men are shit in the best way. Stop saying that you aren't shit and stop treating others like they aren't shit. They are. We're all gods walking around in this earthly plane. So I bring this up to say, right? So um, men being angry at the world and taking it out on people. Women being angry at men, the world, whatever. I bring this up to say and to men being angry at women, by the way. I think I didn't give them their flack enough for that. A lot of men are angry at women because of their relationships with their moms. Either their moms aren't present or were too coddling or whatever. And so they hate women. So many men hate women. That's actually, it's very scary. Uh, because again, men are allowed to express that more and they're allowed to be a lot more hateful and violent towards that. So I wish a lot of men would really, really um, deal with that anger or have someone to walk them through that anger too. But I'm hoping that that's shifting the more, um, the more as we, as we go along more in society. Um, but yeah, so the reason I bring these points up, anger from everyone, you have to ask yourself, is it conducive? Sorry, hold on. I have a text, so I wanna see. Aww. Okay, sorry. Um, lovely text. Okay, um, so, sorry, that made my day, I'm like distracted. But you have to ask yourself, anger, okay. I know I'm like all over the place, but the message is going to get to you no matter what. Is it really worth it? Is the anger worth it? And so here's where you have to ask yourself. So anger can be productive. Let me talk about productive before we go into is it worth it. Anger can be productive because it can show us, if we're angry at someone, it can show us that, um, first of all, let me formulate my thoughts. Why is anger helpful? Anger is helpful because... Sometimes there's a boundary that's been crossed. So sometimes your anger is completely justified. Someone's crossed a boundary with you, and so you're angry at them. And that anger is uh, something coming up in your body to let you know, this bitch just crossed me. This bitch did not treat me in the way I'm supposed to be treated in my divine nature. And so you have to compose yourself. <laughs> you have to, first of all, also consider the fact that are you also not treating yourself in that way? Because everything's a mirror. So first off, consider, consider the fact that are you treating yourself in a way that violates your own boundaries or isn't honoring yourself? So consider that first. Um, and then also take the necessary steps with that other person to set a boundary. Setting a boundary in that external and, and, and having those sort of boundaries with someone who's overstepped their boundaries and kind of like hurt you or not treated you well. Um, establishing those boundaries can be a way of healing that, that pattern for you. And so you try it once, you get those boundaries set up, and then it becomes easier the more you do it. So anger can be a good thing. And usually the way I see it is anger, if it's directed at someone else, 
first of all, it, it's two things. It is um, a side that I'm not honoring my own divinity. And so someone is crossing my boundaries to show me that. Um, and then B, I am given the opportunity to reestablish boundaries. And so we grow. So anger can be really productive. Um, and anger can also be really productive in the sense of, ooh, what's a good one? Like if you're angry at someone, and maybe this, um, for example, is like a, ooh, let's say like a coworker. A coworker can often be this because um, like coworkers, you don't, you don't get along with everyone you work with. There's so many personalities, like you're not always gonna get along with everyone. So there might be a coworker who triggers you. Like, I hate this bitch. Um, I don't know. She's so, she's so this or she's so that. Um, maybe you have a coworker you feel like is super, super negative. Okay. In some aspect of you, there's negativity. So they're reflecting that negativity back to you. And you being more negative about them being negative doesn't help the situation. If you can focus on something in them that's positive, sounds counterintuitive and I sound wah wah crazy, it energetically elicits something different from them. If you aren't so concerned or thinking about how negative they are, it will elicit a different response for them. And then you're going to be gagged when they show up in a way that's not so triggering. What will happen is those people who you don't like or you're angry at or whatever, they're either going to fall away just naturally because vibrationally you aren't at the same level or they'll show up in a different version. They'll show up in a way that isn't as triggering to you. And so you don't have to be best friends with that person, but you can deal with them. And that's my whole point about this anger thing. I'm gonna give one more example, but that's my whole point about this anger thing to kind of get you to consider is, is it worth it? Because if you're angry at them, that's only gonna create more negative feelings about them for you. And then when you have to be around them, when you either have to be around them or you're attracting them to heal this in you, um, that's gonna make that time quite miserable. And so you're just keeping repeating that cycle. Wouldn't you rather like have fun or like at least be neutral and peaceful? So I don't, I'm not suggesting that the bitches you hate, you be best friends with. What I am suggesting is <laughs> um, not always focusing on the negative in them might elicit a different response for you. And just to consider that, um, I'll give you another example. I did have a coworker who um, I really didn't like her at first. And I didn't like her because I felt like she talked a lot. And um, not, it wasn't even that she talked a lot. It was that she talked about herself and in a way that was kind of a little like unaware, like a little like la la la, all about me. And it, she didn't really give a lot of room for others in the conversation. So I realized one of two things, and both are probably true. First was, bitch, I talk a lot. I talk a lot and I probably talk a lot about myself. Um, and maybe I'm not conscious about that or so it could definitely be that one. Or I think B, which I'm working on, I don't allow myself that space to be obsessed with myself. Because the way I would describe it is she's like a little self-obsessed, but I think more of us should be. I mean, as long as you're still creating space, that's the only thing that I could say about her is like, I do still feel like she could maybe like make more room for others and like make more space for others in conversation. But she was a gift, a gift in disguise. Um, because she showed me, bitch, you're not obsessed with yourself enough. You are not obsessed with yourself enough. You don't brag about how amazing you are and your beautiful qualities. And I don't mean even mean brag, but you don't like celebrate your amazing qualities. You don't talk about um, uh, the fashion you like or the makeup you like. or You just don't, like she was showing me that I need to get a little bit more obsessed with myself. And so when I was angry at her, it was just showing me that part of myself that I wasn't allowing. So actually, I don't mind being around her at all now. Um, I... Yeah, I don't mind being around her at all. But the funny thing is I don't even, it's almost like I don't even really attract her anymore. And I don't know if that's because we're like differently, vibrationally different, but I think it's also probably just that like I've, maybe I've learned my lesson from her. Maybe that was her lesson and I just don't, I haven't been attracting her lately. So um, that's the thing with this stuff. It's all to heal us and to like come home, to work through the shit that we need to work through and all that. So yeah, consider that. And, and that the point, with these examples is to say, is it worth it? Um, is your anger worth it? Because usually the anger that we're holding on to, we think it's gonna help us, but it is kind of just like dragging us down. It's kind of like baggage, it's kind of like trash, you know, that that we just, we, we keep around. We wouldn't like keep a trash bag around with us and lug it around all day, but that's kind of what we do with our anger. 
And I also acknowledge that it takes a lot of time to forgive others and to deal with our anger. So I'm not suggesting that it's like this amazingly easy process. I'm just asking you to consider this um, and what you think about it. Um, and you totally don't have to agree with me. Um, maybe you don't agree with anything I'm saying. Um, did I already talk about anger, primary or secondary emotion? If I didn't, what I also learned in therapy was that uh, anger is a secondary emotion. So again, anger's trying to, like when you're angry at someone, or you're triggered by someone, it's a mere reflection to you, and it's showing you something. Either you're the same as them, or you aren't allowing yourself to be similar to them. And often, the, the, when you get triggered by someone, it's a more dramatic version of like the thing that you wish you could be. So, like for example, the coworker example I gave you, like talking a lot about herself. Obviously, a super dramatized version of that. Like she does kind of talk a lot about herself, but um, there's nothing wrong with that per se. Um, she was amplifying that to me, like showing me on a wide scale. And it was really telling me, okay, maybe you don't need to go as far as her, but allow yourself to be a little bit more self-obsessed, babe. It's not going to hurt anyone. So, um, yeah, but the anger is usually like a, a secondary emotion. It's covering up hurt or it's covering up pain or sadness or despair, or something like that, or grief. So just, um, if you have anger, it's something in you that wants to come home. It's something in you that wants to be healed. So consider if you can do that. And again, I'm not suggesting the elimination of anger altogether. I have things that I'm still angry about, but um, see if you can use it in a productive way rather than to hold on to it in this way of like, oh, I'm so angry. I hate the world. I hate people. See if you can let it go because it's kind of only hurting you and it's kind of only making your experience like more shitty. And I feel like we should have more fun. So consider that. I'm not suggesting you completely change everything around in your life but um maybe maybe this is illuminating something in you and i hope it is and it's helpful okay consider your anger guys um and i hope you guys have a good rest of your week bye